on the these people are completely and utterly nuts uh, perspective. Uh, here's a video I found. You know, somebody posted it on a Twitter, and I watched it, and oh, my God. So I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, it's a short video. It's less than a minute. I don't think I really have to stop it. I, I think I could just let it roll, and you guys can just listen to this. This is Tucker Carlson, who, by the way, was one of the speakers at the Madison Square Garden rally. He is very close to the Trump people. He is very close to Trump's kids, Trump Jr. and, uh, and uh, Donald Trump Jr. and uh, Eric. Um, he is a real voice for what you could call the new Republican Party. He is definitely a voice for MAGA and therefore a voice for Trump, right? This is your new Republican Party. Um, and this is a short video. Um, not about Israel, not about Ukraine. This is just kind of domestic policy. This is Tucker Carlson just revealing, revealing. He, he's being interviewed by the finance guy, the guy who doesn't like debt. The fi I, forget, I forget his name. Um, and, I mean, the freeze frame is pretty funny, but it, it, it's, it's kind of perfect. But... I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. Any, anything that gives these people more power, anything that, gives, that puts these people closer to the levers of power um, f is freaky. It's, it's dangerous, and it's crazy. Here's Tucker Carlson. And so I've often thought if I were to retire, maybe I would start a political movement, a new party in the country where the whole purpose is to bring the banks to their knees and shut them down, or just you encourage everyone who's deep in debt to stop payment. How about 100 million people stop paying their car loans, their mortgages, and their credit cards? In the same way that Donald Trump once said, if you take a big enough loan from the bank, it's their problem. It's their problem. You're kind of in charge of the bank at that point. I would think it'd be kind of cool to do a crush the banks political party <laughs> where you just all of a sudden everyone stops payment at once. And then, you know, then you sit down with Jamie Dimon and renegotiate. Yeah. What about that? I kind of like that. <sighs> I kind of like that, right? Yeah, it's Dave Ramsey. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys can believe that, but... It's just his nihilism, pure nihilism, is just reaching new lows. He wants to, I mean, his fantasy is to establish a new political party that basically, the name is Crush the Banks, where he encourages all Americans to just stop paying their debts. I mean, indeed, if all Americans stop paying their debts, what are the banks going to do? I mean, it's not like the banks can do anything. It's not like, well, they're going to sue everybody in America. We all have debts, credit card debts, uh, mortgages, car loans, stuff. We just stop paying, all of us. And my guess is this new political body would support it, so the government would actually be on our side. What are the government, what, what the bank's going to do? They're basically going to, that's it, they're, they're finished. But what else is finished when that happens? What else is finished when that happens? I mean, the entire U.S. economy, I mean, tanks, not in the way that 2008 it tanks. It goes away. It just goes away. You want to you wanna speed track the United States to become Venezuela? This is it. I mean, one of the reasons the United States is still afloat is because it has a robust, flexible, amazingly efficacious financial system, in spite of all the regulations and controls and everything else. Things just end. People start going hungry. Economic activity stops. Businesses cannot pay their workers. This is just destruction for the sake of destruction. This is like a, a, a leftist Marxist fantasy of getting those evil capitalists, the bankers, Jewish bankers maybe, but bankers. I mean, Tucker was 
sane not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago. And then he became kind of wacky, kind of just uninteresting Republican type. And then he became a little crazy and, and really pushing the envelope. Now he's a complete nut. But here's the thing about this particular complete nut. He is an influential nut. He is very, very close to the levers of power nut, particularly if Trump gets elected. He is a nut with millions of followers. How can a country where Tucker Carlson might be the most popular media personality, how can a country survive that? I mean, this is Occupy Wall Street, left. I told you, I've said this, I don't know, I've probably said this over 10 years now. I remember because I gave a talk, I think it was my last talk at the Fort Hall Forum. It was uh, 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 50 years from Ayn Rand's, um, from Ayn Rand's Apollo and Dionysus talk. And in that talk was the first time I think I articulated this at least in a talk, I say in that talk, we are heading towards authoritarianism, an authoritarianism that will unite the left and the right. And I said it will unite them around flag and religion and environmentalism. I, I focused on environmentalism. But I was wrong. It's not just environmentalism. It's a unity of religion and flag from the right and environmentalism, and hatred, hatred of finance, and really by extension of business on the right. right. Hellwolf says, you're on the country, so I barely, the lefty crazies. Yeah. So what we've chosen to do is right-wing crazies, and now we have no sane alternatives. I don't know how you survived that. Like, the alternative to Tucker is AOC. What's the difference between AOC and Tucker Carlson? Much more in common between AOC and Tucker Carlson than differences on the fundamental, key, deep issues that define this country. AOC and Tucker Carlson are in agreement. They agree on Israel. They agree on finance and banking, which means they agree really on the economic system. Where did, where did Tucker Carlson and AOC disagree. Well, Tucker's kind of a white Christian nationalist, and AOC is not. All right, so we'll have to get over the, the, the racist stuff. But other than that, and, and the religious stuff. But other than that, I mean, AOC could be convinced to be religious, and I think Tucker Carlson could be convinced to have a broader tent racially. And that's it. You, you, you know, why can't Tucker Carlson and AOC be in the same political party? I think they can't tomorrow. They share much more in common. There is no longer an opposition. There is only different variations of authoritarian statism. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> uh, I did a positive uh, show on uh, Sunday, so you know, yeah, yeah, I, can, I can be as negative as I want today. <laughs>